Hi there, my name is Becky Kerliak, and I am one of the AT facilitators. I support the areas of Pickering Ajax in the north. And welcome to this bite-sized PD on how you can use read and write to support your students with the writing process. So I'm just going to switch for me and switch over to my screen. So right now you should see that I am in a Google Doc and you will see that I have the tool Google Read and Write open. So when you're in a Google Doc, a second purple puzzle piece will be dangling and you simply click on that one and all of your tools are available for you. Read and Write is definitely a tool that is necessary for some of our students to be successful in writing, but it is beneficial for all of our students to be using. In the next 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to review how to use the word predictor, the talk and type, and a brand new tool called Check It. To start off, let's look at the word predictor. To use the word predictor, it is now the second icon and it's the prediction tool. So when I click the prediction tool, a box will appear and it will predict what the student wants to write. So if the student wanted to write the sentence on the weekend, they may know how to spell on and they can start to sound it out. When they see the words in the list, they can hover their mouse over each of the words and it will say the words as they hover on top of them. When they see the word that they want, they can click on that word with their mouse. And with the Chromebooks and the Yoga 11 E's, they are touch screens. So the student could also just touch the word that they want to put into their writing. So if they wanted to say on the weekend and they see the first word there, they could simply just touch the word the and it will go into their writing. And again, they could start to sound out the word weekend and they may recognize that it is there right away and select the word. What I would like to do next is to show you how you can change some of the settings of the word predictor to maybe make it easier for some of your students. So the default setup is that it's going to follow their cursor while typing. And for some students, this could be frustrating. And for other students, it's great because it's right there as they're writing and it reminds them to be using their word predictor. Anytime you want to make a change, you simply go to the arrow on the far right of the toolbar and click on options. When you're in the options, you click on prediction. And the default is to follow the cursor while typing. So if I deselect that, and at the same time, I'm going to make my sample text as large as possible. And the benefit of that is that the words are going to be much larger. And then the students, when they are using their touch screens, are more likely to be accurate in the selection with their finger. So now you'll see that my word predictor is no longer following my cursor. It often goes over on the left and even covers part of the toolbar. So they can move the word predictor as they need to by clicking the gray banner and dragging and dropping the word predictor to wherever they want. So I'm just gonna put it on the side. And if they wanted to say on the weekend, I rent, and again, they could be using the words as they see them in the list. I'm just gonna type the sentence on the weekend, I went to the zoo with my family. So I put the letter F for family. And again, the students can hover over each of the words and they will hear each of the words as they are going over them. But for primary students and for some other students, having a visual can be very supportive for them. The mountain in the sun icon is your picture dictionary. So if I turn on my picture dictionary, I can move it over to the side. And when I hover over the words, they can hear the words and they can also have the visual to support them as they're writing. So they might hear the word family and then see the word family to support them with their writing. Now I'm gonna show you how you could use the word predictor in French. So I'm just gonna close the picture dictionary for now and close my prediction. I'm going to hit enter just a new line here so that I can switch over to a new language. And again, I'm gonna to go to the arrow in the toolbar and go into options. If I'm interested in having my students use the word predictor in French class, there are two things that I need to change. The first thing I need to do is go to speech and change the voice. The most common voice for French would be the French Canadian Julie. She will sound the best for the students. So I'm going to change that voice. 
And again, they're going to want to change the reading speed at this point, probably down into the mid 30s, just to slow it down a little bit. And then under the language tab, if you think of the word predictor being a feature, you want to change that feature settings to French. So I'm going to go into there and change that to Francais and hit OK. Now when I turn on my word predictor, you will see that the words are French and I can turn on my picture dictionary to support my students. So I'm just going to select a few words here. Le problème est que le. And then again, if the students don't know what the words are, so they don't know what Jean or autre is, then they can just look at the picture to help them decide which word in the list that they want to use. So to undo that, I'm just going to close my word prediction, close my picture dictionary, go back into my arrow and in options, and under languages, I'm going to change the features back. At this point, it's also a good time to mention to you that the default for features would be English for the United States. So a good thing for all students to do as soon as they start using Read and Write for the first time is to come into options under languages and change it to English United Kingdom. By doing this, what it does is that it will spell words like color with a Canadian spelling in the word predictor. So again, once the students have selected these English United Kingdom options, it will stay there forever for them because that will be their settings. Under speech, I'm just going to change it back to Samantha and I'm going to hit OK at that point. And I'm just going to hit enter to move my way down. So the word predictor is an excellent tool for all of our students to be using in the writing process. The next tool that I want to show you is the talk and type. To activate talk and talk and type, you're going to select this icon right here. The very first time that you select talk and type, you're going to have to give permission to the microphone of that device. I've already accepted that permission, so you just need to make sure for students that they accept that when it comes up. As soon as you turn on talk and type, the symbol will go red, and it was pretty sensitive, it caught my voice there, so I'm just going to delete that. They just need to turn it off right away because I often find the students need to think about what they're going to say before they turn on the microphone. And that's really important that we don't want to just teach our students to turn on a microphone and to babble because they're not going to be successful with that. They need to think about what they're going to say and still plan and organize their ideas. So I'm just going to show you some examples here. On the weekend, I went to the zoo with my family, period. I saw lots of animals when I was at the zoo, period. My favorite animal was the penguin, period. I really liked the penguin because it could swim really fast, period. I really liked the giraffes because they were tall, period. I really liked the polar bears because they were playing with each other, period. New line. So you can see that I was able to add some punctuation and I was able to say a whole paragraph. There were commands like new line, period, comma, and all other punctuation. There's quite a list of commands that you can do. I often like when I do this that if it's not perfect because it's really important for our students to realize that after they use the talk and type, the editing process is extremely important. So then we want to put, have them put their cursor at the beginning of their writing and hit play and have them listen to their work and to see if they have any mistakes in their work. All right, another amazing part of the talk and type is that this can really support our ELL students. The talk and type has options in hundreds of different languages. So when you look at your talk and type, there's a little arrow here and you can change the language from there. And you'll see that there's hundreds of different languages and we've had lots of great exper of experiences where students can choose their first language and speak in their first language. I'm gonna use French as an example. I'm gonna turn on the microphone. Bonjour, comment ça va aujourd'hui? So the students can speak in their first language they can highlight the text, and then if they come back up to the talk and type option and right click, they can choose the option to translate to English. 
And there you will see that it has been translated. We've had great success with this tool with students who can speak in their first language and then translate it back to English. I just wanted to let you know that if any of their first languages work from right to left, then it is actually going to be the mirror image when you convert it to English. So for example, I had a student who spoke in Urdu and said Canada is great, and then the C was on the far right, and then it worked its way backwards with that sentence. However, for some teachers, that is better than nothing, and it is an opportunity to be able to communicate with their students. So that is our second tool for Talk and Type. It's a fantastic tool that can benefit many of our students, especially some students with learning disabilities. It will really increase their writing production. It will improve their writing mechanics. It increases their independence. And for a lot of our students, it will decrease their anxiety about writing because they're able to share all of those awesome ideas that they have, and they're able to see their ideas in print on the screen and to be able to work with their ideas and to edit them. All right, lastly, I wanna show you a brand new tool that has just come out in the last week or two, and it is called the Check It tool. So the Check It tool is this check mark, which is our first icon on the beginning of the toolbar. So I'm just gonna go over to a different Google Doc. And here's an example of maybe a sentence that a student tried to write. I'm going to click on the read and write toolbar and I've turned on the check it already. So we see the purple line is underneath, so it is on. And when the students see the purple line, they can left click on that word. So for example, if I click on here, it just shows that it's a spelling mistake and I can switch it to gorillas at that point. Here we see that the lowercase i has a purple line, so I can select that one and change it to a capital I. The great thing about check it, it was it will check spelling mistakes it will check some grammar mistakes and even some homophone errors. So for example here, if I click there, it indicates to the students that they've used the wrong there and they can select it. If there's a word that it suggests and they wanna add it to their dictionary, they can do that. So if we go over into my options, under check it, you will see that I changed the word favorite and so I accepted it and said that the O-U-R was the correct spelling and it will have all the list of errors that really aren't errors. So I, I've changed it so that this favorite is no longer an error. Sorry, is an error. All right, so those are three great tools that we need to be promoting with our students. Again, these tools are necessary for a lot of our students and are beneficial for all. So I encourage you to start with using the word predictor, the talk and type, and the check it tools with your students when they are writing. If you have any questions, my name is Becky Kurliak or Rebecca Kurliak, and I support Pickering Ajax in the North, and my partner Tracy Armstrong Strong supports Osho and Whippy, and your cert would be able to get you in touch with us. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. <laughs>